JavaScript has risen to become one of the most popular interpreted programming languages. Since it doesn't require a compiler, the language executes steps during runtime that would be typically ran during compilation. There's something kind of magical getting to write some JavaScript in the command line and just see it run. No need to program in an IDE or wait for your code to compile. You can just write and execute. Despite the fact that interpreted languages can speed up development time, all good things must come to an end. As a project grows with more complexity, it no longer becomes easier to use a language that doesn't compile before runtime. There have been a number of packages created attempting to address this problem over the past decade, but it wasn't until our man Nicholas C. Zakis created ESLint in 2013 when cleaning up JavaScript code before execution finally became practical and sustainable. Hello, I'm Ujemma, and today we'll be looking at the core features of ESLint that every developer should know. We'll first look at how to include and set up ESLint into a project using rules and plugins, then understand how to define the environment of a project, and finally speed up linting time by using caching. If any of this sounds interesting, hit the subscribe button. All right, let's get started. Before we start using ESLint, we'll need to create an NPM project. To create such a project, run npm init in your project's directory. Then we'll add eslint to the project by using the command npm install eslint. And of course, we'll have to create an eslint configuration file by running mpx eslint dash dash init. I selected browser for the desired environment and JSON for my configuration files type. Similar to Babel, eslint runs by following a set of rules and plugins. The greatest advantage of ESLint is that it's properly configured straight out of the box. This means that for smaller projects, there's probably no need to have to add or change any rules. In the cases where some rules no longer fit your needs, ESLint makes it easy to reconfigure its default settings. To see this in action, I'll create a simple function named greeting that will return a custom greeting using the passed in argument. After the return statement, I'll throw in a console log. My text editor is screaming at me because I'm breaking some predefined ESLint rules. Starting with the first error, the tooltip reads, greeting is assigned but never used, ESLint, no unused vars. No unused vars is the name of the ESLint rule that was broken, so I have two options. I could either change my code that would satisfy this rule by using it somewhere, or change the rule. Though this is a rule that you would never want to ignore, I'll show you how to change the severity of the rule. In the rule section of eslint.json, I'll add no unused vars and set it to the value zero. We completely silence this rule. If we look back at our file, the red underline is gone. If we wanted to treat this rule as a warning instead of a full blown error, we could pass in the value one. Instead of a red underline, we'll be greeted with a yellow underline. The second error is no unreachable, which is an error that we should definitely address since this would perform unexpected logic. All we have to do in this case is move the code above the return statement. ESLint also provides support for plugins, which are a great solution for including a standard set of rules typically applied for frameworks like React. So let's imagine that this is a React project and we would want to include the ESLint plugin React package. We would run npm install eslint plugin react dash dash save dev. Then we would want to add the keyword react inside the plugin section in the configuration file. The environment option tells eslint which environment it's running in so it knows which global variables to ignore while linting. When we selected the browser option within the initialization wizard, the configuration file came with two environment options, browser and es6. Global variables are simply variables that weren't defined within the scope of a given file, but it's recognized by the JavaScript language depending on the environment the code is running in. There's a ton of different environments that ESLint supports like Node, Jest, Mongo, and so much more, but we're going to be focusing specifically on the browser and ES6 environments. Let's see another example. Looking at index.js, which is inside our source folder. Let's say I want to grab the current URL of the window that my JavaScript file is running in. So I created a constant variable named page URL that's assigned the value window.href. At first glance, we don't see any errors, but if we change the environment option browser to false within our configuration file, then we'll see an error pop up saying that both window and console are no longer defined. The underlying sections are considered as errors by ESLint, but not by JavaScript. This means that if we run this code, there wouldn't be any problems. 
But when ESLint is looking through our project, it doesn't recognize the reference global variables because they weren't defined in the same file. So we have to define the environment so the package knows that window and console are predefined global variables. Let's look at another example of global variables in the ES6 environment with the new class weak map. So I'll create a new constant called map, which is assigned to an empty weak map. If I set the environment option ES6 to false, then ESLint won't recognize weak map as a global variable. Global variables are absolutely mandatory for any JavaScript project. So setting environments is absolutely pivotal for ESLint to work as best as it can. We could take it one step further by defining specific global variables that ESLint recognized environments don't include. So I have the variable howdy that I want to be considered as a global variable. I added it to my code by trying to log it. Since this variable wasn't imported or defined in this file, ESLint sees it as an undefined variable. To fix this, I'll add the variable to the global section in our configuration file and set its value to read only. If we look back at our statement, howdy is no longer throwing an error. If we wanted to be extra fancy, we could even disable global variables that were included in predefined environments. The best use case for this is to throw errors when using deprecated objects within an environment. Again, despite the fact that this should never be done, let's say I wanted to exclude the promise variable. I would use the keyword off so that it would no longer be treated as a global variable. For the last core feature of ESLint, we'll be looking at caching. After hearing me explain things from rules to environments, some might wonder what's left to do. Well, consider the case where you might have dozens or even hundreds of files in one code base. ESLint would have to parse through every single file, even the ones that weren't changed, to determine if the code was written up to standard. This can quickly become a task that slows down the development process. ESLint takes this downside of linting into consideration by including the cache flag. The package stores all the unchanged files in the ESLint cache file. This dramatically improves the performance of ESLint when analyzing your project's code. It's important to note though, that if you run ESLint without the cache flag, any pre-existing ESLint cache file will be deleted. This serves as a safeguard for developers from using possibly invalidated caches, which could lead to ignoring files that actually need to be linted. Adding caching functionality to a project is quite simple. In package.json, I'll add two scripts, lint and lint cache. Run lint cache to lint the entire source folder while caching the files. We should now see a fresh eslint cache file appear in the root of our project folder. You might not notice a difference when a project has only a couple of files, but as a project grows in complexity, this is a must use to save a lot of development time. These are arguably the most important features to know when using eslint. There's a whole bunch of extra features like extends or parser that provide even more customizability to a project. If you want to see what ESLint can really do, I recommend checking the package's documentation. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.